The trade deadline in your fantasy football league is quickly approaching, so right now is the time to make a big move. And because of that, in this video, we're breaking down the seven wide receivers that can improve your fantasy team, whether you have no wins or you're undefeated. And we'll start with Devonta Smith, who I think there is somewhat of a buy low window here on Devonta Smith, especially after what he did this past week in week seven. And now again, this really wasn't all his fault, but he had one catch for negative two yards. That means me and you watching this had more yards on Sunday than Devonta Smith. I know it's a cliche joke, right? But he only had, depending on where you're looking, this day data provider says two targets some data providers that i would probably trust a little bit more are saying one target like pff like player profiler so you got one target from devonta smith in this past game which is like okay why did that happen well all you have to do is look at the box score and look at the game script here you could see that jalen hurts only threw 14 times in this game he only threw 14 times and then you scroll down to see where all the production went it went to aj brown on five of his targets a couple of check down targets to saquon barkley and that was it everybody else in this game is basically seeing one or two targets espn has devonta smith for two targets so 14 total targets up for grabs there was also in this game two throwaways so really only 12 actual catchable targets in this game and if you watch this one at all you know that it was a complete blowout philadelphia got up early in this one 14 to nothing and then it's just basically they didn't look back the giants did not score in the second half the giants looked really bad the eagles pass rush was getting to the giants left and right because they didn't have andrew thomas for the first game their left tackle and in the second half you just had saquon barkley getting his revenge on the new york giants the eagles didn't have to pass the ball but in terms of the underlying usage here for Devonta Smith like everything still looked good he ran 91 percent of the routes on their passing plays in this game sure it only led to that one target and nine percent share but he's still out there he was still playing over 70 percent of his snaps in the slot which we're seeing is good usage for him he's getting some downfield usage but also a lot of usage in the slot gives him the, the ability to use the entire field not just one side of it and if you look back before this game like there was a bye week in there as well but if you look back before this game everything you're getting out of Devonta Smith is great it's only top 25 finishes as you can see right here he scored basically 15 or more fantasy points in every single game before week seven now some of these games of course were without aj brown and when aj brown has been out there aj brown has been the alpha generating the most targets on this team but that's what you would expect because he was a first round pick in fantasy when smith was like a third round but as of right now devonta smith currently ranks 12th in wide receiver efficiency on the year he's producing really well and if we were to redraft fantasy teams right now i believe he would still be a third round pick if not higher in fantasy given all the other injuries at the wide receiver position and let's just look at his schedule the Bengals, then home against the Jaguars allow the second most passing yards per game the Cowboys the commanders a bottom 10 secondary the Rams a bottom five secondary and the Ravens a bottom three secondary all of these matchups the next six weeks are all against bottom half of the league secondaries and then you can go out even more into week seven or seven weeks from now they face the Panthers the worst defense in the NFL the next seven weeks are all great matchups for the Eagles and Smith so if I pull up my rest of season rankings right here my trade tool you can see Devonta Smith is my 30th overall ranked player again I said he would be a third round pick if we redrafted today in 12 team formats and that's exactly where he lands right here in the middle of the third round so these guys below him i would trade one for one for devonta smith right now josh jacobs uh brian thomas jr terry mclaurin these are all players that i think you can get a deal done maybe you don't have to spend that much maybe you could even get away with a brian robinson as he continues to score touchdowns in a good commander's offense although daniels is now hurt but you get the point here i do believe that this is a window that you can buy low on devonta smith off of a brutal performance and he has a great rest of season schedule i also think there's an opportunity right now to buy low on deontay johnson and look this is a guy who's just dealing with so many different injuries check this out heading into week seven not only was he dealing with and we'll zoom in on it here according to the uh, panthers injury report not only was he dealing with a rib injury but also a hamstring and an ankle injury this kept him out of practice if we go through the practice reports did not practice on wednesday thursday it really looked like he was going to miss this game picked up a rib injury on thursday but then he gets in a limited participation on friday and he ends up suiting up in week seven despite being way less than 100 and i mean if we pull up the fantasy life data right here you can just tell based on his usage he was less than 100 he saw his fewest routes run 73 percent of the routes in a game this season since week one and in week one he left that game early with an injury so this was his lowest usage in a game that he actually completed this year just 73 percent of the routes still ended up going out there leading the team with an 18 percent target share but if you watch this game for the carolina panthers andy dalton played really bad and in general the offense was atrocious which led to deontay johnson putting up just one catch for 17 yards and i believe he did this like early on in the first quarter of the game for the entire second half he was completely blanked going up against a commander's secondary that you know maybe they're on the up and up but also they face this bad panthers offense and the bad browns offense over the past couple of weeks so this is still a commander secondary that is not all that great so the fact that this offense struggled andy dalton and all the players is a concern for sure and what makes it even more of a concern is now the rumors are starting like okay maybe it's time we give the number one overall pick from last year bryce young another shot at this but at this point the quarterback situation just looks brutal although i do believe it will get even worse if bryce young is out there because so far what we've seen this year and even last year he doesn't look like an nfl quarterback now there is still a concern like we can't have these two fantasy point days 
he's out of Deontay Johnson. But the thing that's kind of keeping me interested in his upside is the fact that the NFL trade deadline is coming up. And we've already seen a ton of activity of wide receivers being traded. And now there's teams like the 49ers, the Chiefs, the Bucks, quality offenses with good to great quarterbacks that need another wide receiver weapon right now. So yes, trading for Deontay Johnson in fantasy right now has risks. The biggest one being that this offense is a concern most importantly if Bryce Young was to take over again. So there are some risks associated with this. But there's also a lot of upside if he gets paired up with Patrick Mahomes, Brock Purdy, and Kyle Shanahan. Heck, even Baker Mayfield and Liam Combe, the play caller right now who looks great for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And keep in mind, when you send the trade off, you're not going to overpay. It's all about getting the right value and a fair deal. Deontay Johnson is my number 56 overall player right now. So you can go ahead and trade one for one Chase Brown. I feel good about that deal. You scroll down a little bit more. Maybe you can get a deal with Nick Chubb since he found the end zone. There's a lot of hype around him. He has the big name value as well. You can get some sort of trade there maybe worked in. A package deal that includes Tank Bigsby or heck, maybe you even get the one for one Tank Bigsby or Kareem Hunt deal off. I think that's a fantastic option if it lands you Deontay Johnson in return, who even if he doesn't get traded, I think is a valuable piece moving forward. And if he does, he starts to become like a top 40 overall player, even higher in fantasy. Now that tool I've been showing you is my rest of season rankings, aka also known as the trades tool. And it's pretty simple. It's just the higher a player is ranked here across all positions, the better they are rest of season. This is the updated version for this week. And it was just sent out to over 21,000 other people. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I get my hands on that? And also there's a bunch of other tools you can get as well. Well, it's simple. You just click the link in the description below and it'll take you to this page where you'll see it say how to get access right here. You just scroll down slightly how to get access and you follow these two simple steps. Those steps will take you to this page where there's two partners you can sign up for to get the blueprint. And that is what this is. The fantasy blueprint out of all my tools. And the reason why you want to sign up through our two partners, that's an option this year is because when you do that, it becomes risk free. Now, what does that mean? It means that it's a one time payment of $10 when you sign up through a partner. And if you don't make your fantasy playoffs, I just refund that $10 payment. All you have to do is reach out, making it completely risk free and to get you access to the trades tool to my weekly projections and rankings game by game matchup notes for every fantasy relevant player my waiver wire tiers and a whole lot more so to get access to my fantasy blueprint that i use for all my leagues and over 21,000 other people use for theirs you can just scan this qr code that's on the screen right here right now or click the link in the description below you'll get all those tools to smack around your friends and league weight league mates with and that's what this is all about anyways all right now the next player we got to talk about is Jalen waddle who look honestly I, I this was supposed to be the bounce back week for waddle right this was a guy coming out of his bye week out of his bye week an extra week for mike mcdaniel the coach to play Carl on this team to know what to do against the Indianapolis Colts who don't have a good defense. So much so that the Colts have a bottom five secondary on the season, allowing the third most receiving yards to outside receivers this year. Surely after having an extra week to prepare, Jalen Waddle was finally going to have a good game since like week one. Well, what did we get? We got nothing. We got zilch. We got basically nothing, right? As close as you can get to nothing. One catch on a, for 11 yards on two targets. I thought I had to refresh this. Just two fantasy points. I figured this was the first, maybe second drive of the game for Jalen Waddle. I continued to refresh it on Sunday night and I said oh no what happened with Miami coming out of the bye week nothing happened like Mike McDaniel what are we doing he's supposed to be this mastermind I get it a lot of that is in the run game and they did find success on the ground in this game to some extent and you don't have your quarterback but you had an extra week to prepare here an extra week to prepare and this is what you land on in the receiving department you land on Jalen Waddle one catch for 11 yards targeted just two times you land on Tyreek Hill one of the most dynamic if not the most dynamic player in the game one catch eight yards two targets didn't have a target until midway through the second and half I mean I get it you scroll up here and you see what he's working with he's working with Tyler Huntley who got hurt in this game and Tim Boyle who was statistically the worst quarterback in the NFL last year had to come in and that wasn't great right eight of 13 74 yards so I get it like it's already been four different games this year when the starting quarterback in that game left with an injury and had to be replaced that's not ideal so we can give some bail to Mike McDaniel but also there's still some of these questions out there like how can you at least not put together some sort of an offense and scheme in your best players so yeah the lack of production for Jalen model is of course a reason why he's a buy low but there has to be something other than that because this production isn't going to change if you keep these terrible quarterbacks Skylar Thompson Tyler Huntley and Tim Boyle throwing the ball but the good news is as of right now they're expecting to attack a buy low to return as of this recording he is not cleared to concussion protocol but the expectation is that he will once he starts to get some practices under his belt because that's all a part of the process and it might not seem this simple like just drop Tua back into this offense that's been atrocious the last month or month and a half and now it all goes back to being a top 10 offense like I don't think it's that simple but honestly it might be because not much else has changed in this offense sure there's some re-injury risk to two if he takes one more hit he's probably done for the entire season and maybe his career but like all the way back in week one remember the good times for Jalen model for over 19 fantasy points for five catches for 109 yards on his five targets had a carry for three yards was looking great this was translating into his second game on Thursday night football before Tua got hurt like that's the good old days of Jalen model back in week one and two I do believe that we're just one Tua attack of Viola start away from that happening like this wasn't a lower body injury this wasn't an injury to his shoulder it was a concussion that yes those things are very scary and serious and the re-injury rate for him is extremely
extremely high right now based on his past track record. That's all scary. But once he's good and good to go and clears the protocol, like he's good. He, he's out there as long as he doesn't take another big hit. Like, let's just look at the production with Jalen Waddle on the season. He had those 16 fantasy points in week one. And then since then, if you just scroll eight, six, seven, eight, two this past week out of the bye in a good matchup. Again, just so brutal. He's averaging since that week one game, six and a half fantasy points per game. Even if the fantasy manager in your league knows two is coming back, they're so frustrated with this guy. He's been on their bench. He's not valued that much to them. They haven't needed him and he hasn't really helped them the past few weeks. So now's the time to send the trade, especially considering that right away, they're going to get good matchups at home against the Cardinals bottom 10 secondary, a matchup against the Bills that could lead to a shootout on the road at home against the Rams bottom five secondary, the Raiders who have an average secondary at best, right? There's some good matchups here. So right now, Jalen Waddle for me is my number 50 player rest of season, which hurts because I really do value him as like a top 30 to top 24 player. But I do think there's still some re-injury risk to two if he takes another hit. But if you can get a deal done for like J.K. Dobbins straight up for one Jalen Waddle, I do that. Chase Brown. I'll mention the names that I mentioned earlier who I'm not as high on because I think some other running backs are going to come back in their backfield. And those names are Kareem Hunt with Isaiah Pacheco due back in a few weeks. Tank Bigsby with Travis Etienne due back in some form in a few weeks. If you can get like a one for one deal or have those guys and throw in a another ancillary wide receiver piece to get this deal done for Jalen Waddle before week eight, before two is back and the good matchup, go ahead and do it. And also just kind of send some offers, engage interest of the Malik neighbors fantasy manager in your league. Because look, this was a gross game in week seven for the Giants. As bad as it gets, they averaged 2.2 yards per play. It was their first game without stud left tackle Andrew Thomas. And it showed the pressure was nonstop on Daniel Jones. I mean, Daniel Jones in this game, he was sacked seven different times. And then uh, Drew Locke came in for like a drive or two. And he was also sacked in that game. You see, Daniel Jones only throws 21 balls here. He only has 99 yards. Their offense in general, like I mentioned, averaged 2.2 yards per play. They barely cracked 100 total passing yards with 105. You scroll down, their 18 carries only got you 76 yards. This was a brutal offensive showing. They didn't even put up 200 total yards of offense in this game. Philadelphia, the pressure was there, and they controlled the clock overall. In this game, Philly ran 63 offensive plays compared to just 47 for the Giants. They had the time of possession locked down. So I think this context is important because because yeah, when I show you that Malik Neighbors returned from his concussion that kept him out for two games and he had just four catches for 41 yards, well, yeah, eight fantasy points isn't ideal. But when you factor in that the offense didn't even crack 200 total yards, threw for only 105 passing yards, the fact that he had like 45 of those receiving yards in general is like, okay, at least he, yeah, he was decent con relative to what happened here in this game. Because although it was a gross showing by the overall offense, like Neighbors right back from his concussion, 95% of the routes, no lag there at all. A 31% target share. Yet again, seeing a 30 plus percent target share for Neighbors, eight targets in this game still the clear alpha number one receiver on this team and yes the Andrew Thomas news I can't stress this enough the left tackle it's brutal if we're talking all non-quarterback and wide receiver offensive pieces in the league he's probably like one of the most definitely top 10 most valuable players in the league maybe top five relative to his team's offense because we saw this last season we saw that this Giants offensive line right here and there's a couple of new faces in free agency like John Runyon from the Packers and Jermaine Illuminor from the Raiders but this is a team last year this offensive line was a historically bad unit not just a worst unit in the NFL last year one of the worst units in the last 20 seasons and a big reason why was Andrew Thomas was hurt last season not pictured here because he's now out for the season he was hurt last season obviously they've been getting nothing out of Evan Neal a first round pick for them but Andrew Thomas came back this season and the offensive line because he's that good started to get a lot better again I said they were historically bad in pass protection last year they're still a bad run blocking team but 14th up to league average slightly above above league average in pass protection this season with Andrew Thomas well we just saw this past week against the Eagles that went out the window as they allowed eight sacks Daniel Jones had no time to throw had no time to find his receivers downfield but the good news is the Giants won't face the Eagles every single week they have to face them again later in the season since they're in the division but not every week and that's important because the Eagles have one of the best if not the best pass rushes in the league if we look at the upcoming schedule they will have another brutal matchup against the Steelers this week on Monday night a Steelers defensive line that is just as good as the Eagles in my opinion but you look through the rest of it here matchup against the commanders bottom 10 pass rush the Panthers bottom 10 pass rush and then some nice matchups in general after that I do think after week eight which could be another stinker week for this offense after week eight in this bad matchup we might be able to see some things start to open up a little bit more for Malik Neighbors and even in this tough matchup this week against the Steelers he could be scheme some production still he could still earn 10 to 12 targets and just that alone can get him by in a game especially if he finds the end zone so despite this Andrew Thomas news as of right now Malik Neighbors is still a top 10 player rest of season for me if we were to redraft today he'd be a first round a late first round pick the only guys I wouldn't trade him for right now are 
Amon Ross St. Brown, if I if I was trying to get neighbors here, uh, CD Lamb, Derrick Henry, AJ Brown, Saquon, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson, as you can see, ahead of him. But the other guys below him, I'd trade Alvin Kamara right now, one for one, to acquire Malik Neighbors. I would trade Tyree Kill, Joe Mixon, uh, Drake London, Nico Collins, who's banged up still. All these guys, I would trade one for one to acquire Malik Neighbors. He's a top 10 overall player for me, and I think he's worth at least poking in trade discussions right now. Hey, what's the offer? What's the market right now for Neighbors? Now, the next player I want to talk about here is Chris Olave, who was concussed in week six. He left early in week six, and he wasn't able to return in week seven because the Saints played on Thursday night football. So now Chris Olave managers have been frustrated because they haven't even had to use the guy the last three weeks. And honestly, it's even more than that. If you look back at this, he got negative points the game that he had a concussion. One catch, five yards. I think he fumbled on that concussion. So he loses points, doesn't play in week seven, but you can take it back here. These are the game logs, by the way, according to player profiler, three points the week before that. So now we're going on a month since Chris Olave produced for his fantasy managers, where he's only had two productive weeks, 16.7 points, and then a top 10 finish, a great week of over 20 points. But those have only been his two productive games for a guy you spent probably a third round pick on in your fantasy drafts. You're really frustrated. Two games you've been able to use in seven weeks. And this type of emotional frustration for the man fantasy manager who has him in your league is exactly why you could probably buy low on Alave right now. And things are trending in the right direction all around right now for Alave. Like, yeah, the Saints, since their first two weeks where they look great, don't look good right now. But Derek Carr is trending to return by week nine. He could even return in week eight, although it does seem a little bit slim that that happens. But getting Carr back will be key because the rookie Spencer Rattler hasn't looked great. And it's hard to blame him. He hasn't had the offensive line, the passing weapons, and he had to play on a short week in Thursday night football. Like, we can't blame the guy that much. But here's the thing. The Saints offense desperately needs a pass catcher, especially a veteran proven route runner like Alave right now. Because I don't know if you watch Thursday Night Football, but with Rashid Shaheed done for the year, which of course is going to help Alave as well, they had to run out there. Mason Titman, an undrafted rookie who, you know, he has a lot of speed, but that's about it. Cedric Wilson, an aging veteran who couldn't even make it as a wide receiver four or five on the Miami Dolphins. And then you have Bub Memes, who I think is a fifth round promising rookie with some nice size and speed out of Pittsburgh. But if this is your best receiver, you're trotting out there for an NFL football game. Yeah, you probably are going to get blown out like the Saints did on Thursday Night Football. And as I mentioned, Rashid Shaheed is unfortunately as a late round pick in fantasy, one of our favorites. Yeah, now he's done for the season, but that will open up a lot more opportunities, more than people thought this year for Alave. And I say more than people thought because check this out right here. According to Fantasy Life, the target shares for the Saints so far this season, it's been Shahid who leads the way, earning 25% of the team's targets. Chris Alave is earning just 18% of the team's targets. Even when they're on the field together, it's Shahid who's earning more targets, seeing way more downfield usage, and just being utilized in a better way across the middle of the field, producing after the catch and getting the downfield looks. But now maybe we get a little bit more of Alave in those roles. And it's kind of the perfect time to be buying low on Alave because, yeah, the fantasy manager who has him knows that, sure, Shahid is out, but he's probably just not really feeling confident in the quarterback situation and what's happened the past month with Alave. But if you look at the rest of season schedule, if you're able to buy low and just, you know, you're a playoff team, potentially a contender, look at this. He gets the Rams. He gets the Giants, two bottom, bottom 10 secondaries, another bottom 10 secondary in the Commanders. Nice matchup against the Packers. Solid matchup in the fantasy championship against the Raiders. We're talking about entering the fantasy postseason and in the fantasy playoffs. That's where you should be trading for these players right now. He has a great schedule by low on Alave. And as you can see, Alave is my number 49 overall player. So he's still a top 50 player for me. I would trade right now one for one. J.K. Dobbins, if you can get that deal done, let's do it. Chase Brown, who's rising up after another solid usage week. Uh, DeAndre Swift coming off of his bye after a couple of nice games. Brian Robinson now with uh, Jaden Daniels hurt, but scoring a lot of touchdowns. All those guys, I think you could probably get a one for one deal done for Chris Alave or some sort of package. Now, before we get into this next rookie, who I think is becoming even more appealing after a recent transaction for his team, nearly 65% of you beautiful people are not subscribed to this channel. So we're at the point in the video, the gentleman's agreement, quick shake on it right there. If you find this video helpful or entertaining, which you probably do if you're at this point in the video, well, just hit the subscribe button. It goes a long way. It takes a long time, six, seven hours to make these videos, get them up for you. So all you have to do in return for me to keep doing them and keep posting them is hit that subscribe button. So there's our gentleman's agreement. And that rookie I was talking about, it's actually Xavier Worthy, who returned from his bye week in week seven, and he actually saw some really solid usage. According to Fantasy Life, you can see right here, he ran 81% of the routes, his second most on the season. But check this out. 32% of the team's targets was a season high by far for Xavier Worthy. He's now seen his targets increase in four straight games from 11% to 13, 13 to 15. And then he goes into the bye week. And the thing you always want to see for a rookie and really any young player going into the bye week is what does their role look like when they come out? And for Xavier Worthy, his target share doubled to 32% in his first game without Rashi Rice in a game where Juju Smith-Schuster got hurt early on, re-injured his hamstring. And look, Xavier Worthy is not the type of player who you can rely on for like 10 plus targets a game, these hundred yard performances. That's just not the reason why he was drafted to this team. Worthy was drafted to this team because of this right here, his elite speed, 4-2-1. The Chiefs the past few seasons had not able to create explosive plays. Patrick Mahomes was not throwing downfield at all really in 2023. It was supposed to be Rashi Rice, Marquise Brown, 
Brown and Travis Kelsey getting a lot of targets and then Worthy maybe you get four to six targets a downfield look here and there and creates that explosive play he wasn't supposed to be the high volume guy but now this 4-2-1 rookie who was very productive all three years in college he's kind of being pigeonholed into that spot because of the fact that they've gotten injuries to Juju to Rashi Rice and Marquise Brown so yes the fact that he came out of the bye week and saw eight targets is encouraging nine opportunities when you factor in his rush attempt of course when he just puts up 19 receiving yards five rushing yards and barely five fantasy points that's not going to be great but the underlying usage shows that they went into the bye week and said let's say see how we can get the guy this guy the ball a lot more and I actually think that this recent news that the Chiefs acquired DeAndre Hopkins for a conditional fifth round pick is beneficial to Xavier Worthy believe it or not because as I've mentioned I don't think he's that guy who should be the number one wide receiver on a team maybe ever but let alone right now this year DeAndre Hopkins though profiles out as an outside X number one receiver can take some pressure literally and figuratively off of Xavier Worthy because up until this point who do defenses have to worry about right like literally with Juju's new injury like Justin Watson no I don't think anybody's worried about Justin Watson beating them consistently Sky Moore who can even catch balls that are thrown his way at this point I think he's a very raw player who else is on this team McColl Harmon who they basically got rid of for nothing and then brought back for nothing because they don't really value him all that much like no they're gonna say where's the guy who runs the 4-2-1 let's make sure he doesn't beat us but now that they acquired DeAndre Hopkins who you can say what you want about Hopkins I know he's 32 years old I know he's having a rough start of the season but Hopkins is still a guy in my opinion who has talent and defenses have to respect and here's the thing with Hopkins his first four weeks of the season he was dealing with a knee injury he had a slight tear in his knee he was trying to recover from that week one he only played like 25 percent of the snaps for the Titans but every week we've seen the usage increase for him and even in week three while dealing with that injury he put up a top 20 top 15 wide receiver finish in fantasy against the Packers at times going up against Jair Alexander in this game catching six of seven targets for 73 yards and a touchdown this is the type of upside you can get when DeAndre Hopkins is right and then three out of the last four weeks with for the Titans while Captain Ridley is out there and much healthier and younger than Hopkins it's been Hopkins who has been leading the team in target share for Tennessee he's still going out there earning targets and only getting healthier and yeah you could be damn sure that if the Chiefs are actually trading for Hopkins that he passed the medicals that that tear that was in his knee and in something that was an issue in the preseason now that we're two to three months removed it's probably healed probably fully at this point if the Chiefs are going through and processing this trade so yeah now when you look at it you get Xavier Worthy not going to be seeing the opposing team's number one cornerback and defensive attention and that's going to be Hopkins assuming that he stays healthy and Xavier Worthy now can get these manufactured touches like we've seen so far this year where he's getting some carries where he's getting usage over the formation the occasional deep shot and I think if you pair that with a couple of more targets a game and him getting experience more reps under his belt in the NFL I think that's a player you should buy low on and since he hasn't been producing right now according to my rest of season rankings the trades tool that again you can get right now I think look I think he's the 76th overall ranked player rest of season you can probably trade oh I don't know Tank Bigsby who once Travis Etienne comes back in like a week or two it's going to be a split backfield or Kareem Hunt these are guys that I think are perfect trade away targets right now even Chuba Hubbard even uh, Ramondre Stevenson to some extent whoever you want Lad McConkey one for one deals are kind of weird at the wide receiver position but those are the types of names I would look to package or trade one for one for one Xavier Worthy now another player we have to talk about a second year player former six round pick for the New England Patriots I believe you should continue to buy low on Demario Douglas maybe he's available on your waivers even and don't let this past week of what happened in week seven steer you wrong because in London he only ran 24 percent of the routes because he was dealing with an illness the guy could not play he, he left early he came back late and this led to Demario Douglas going out there and laying a stinker for you three fantasy points when you were relying on this guy two catches 14 yards but again he had to travel across to London six to seven hours your body then has to adjust to the major time difference while you're already dealing with an illness and it showed in the game he just wasn't ready but don't make that impact the way that you viewed Demario Douglas because look at this in three out of his four games before that he earned a 38 percent 28 percent and 30 percent target share week six is important because that was Drake May's first start and he by far and away preferred one Demario Douglas all over all the other Patriots wide receivers targeting him 30 percent of the time three times more than any other Patriots wide receiver in week six and the same thing was going to happen in week seven because Douglas only played like what 20 percent of the snaps or so and earned three targets he gets his normal 75 percent role and it's another 10 target game and the reason you should be buying into right now Demario Douglas is because he looks like the potential number one wide receiver for Drake May who through two weeks this season whether it's from a fantasy perspective a top 10 quarterback each week or real life perspective he's looked good May is completing 66 percent of his passes and averaging 7.4 yards per 10th which is above the NFL average and as I stated he's been a top 10 fantasy quarterback in back-to-back -back games and here's the crazy thing the concerns were like oh he's going behind a bad offensive line how will that wreck his confidence it hasn't he's been pressured on an insane 41 percent of his dropbacks that's a lot this is a bad offensive line and he's still been able to be this productive under pressure like that was the whole reason why they said that keep Jacoby Brissett in there as a crash test dummy but no Mays looked good and a lot of it is because of his mobility with his legs he's keeping drives alive he's moving the chains with his legs and also escaping out of the pocket and creating more off script which Jacoby Brissett really wasn't doing and what that's leading to is what you're going to be seeing big games in week six from Demario Douglas when he was healthy I think we'll see more of those as the season goes on 
big games in week seven from Hunter Henry, who tops 100 yards. I think we'll see maybe not 100 yard games, but these nice games for Hunter Henry. I think you're going to see a more sustainable offense that moves uh, moves this chains, sustains drives, and then gets to the red zone. And that's going to help everybody on this offense, thanks to Drake May. And that's exactly why you need to be buying low on Demario Douglas. And by the way, you should also be picking up Drake May, available in over 70% of fantasy leagues right now. The dude is literally your escape plan if you drafted Patrick Mahomes, CJ Stroud, or Anthony Richardson. And assuming he's on your waiver wire, just go ahead and pick him up. But if not, like, look, he's my 145th overall rest of season player. I think this is only going to increase. So it's not like there's a high value on him. If we redrafted today, he'd be like a 12th round pick or so. So if you could trade Blake Corum on your bench, Jordan Winnington, who's coming off of his past game isn't great but maybe like a 2-2 at well uh, maybe a Khalil Shakur might be a little bit too much at that point but he's now like the third or fourth option on the bills I think the Mario Douglas this offense has a lot of legs moving forward so these have been the wide receivers I believe you should trade for before week eight now if you want to see the running backs we did a video that came out yesterday you can check it out right here those are the running backs you should be targeting before week eight I think they'll help your fantasy team help you get to the postseason improve your team that's the whole point of these videos so be sure to check out that video as well YouTube thinks you'll like it I think you'll like it and it just might be your favorite video of all time